Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at landscapes in twin motion. There's a decent amount of things that we can look at in landscapes. And you might say, well, we've looked at all the landscape tools and all this. And well, we haven't. We actually haven't. We haven't actually worked with the, the physical landscapes themselves. We've looked at trees and vegetation and a painting on all that stuff, but this is different. We're going to look at terrain, topography, landscape, whatever you want to call it. Twin motion calls it landscapes. So before we get into it, if at any point you happen to learn something or just end up liking the video, do demolish that like button. It helps me out. Also, subscribe. All right. So I'm at a blank scene. Got nothing here. Not yet, anyways. I've got some imports that we looked at in a previous video for height maps, and we'll end up using one of them. But I primarily want to focus on landscapes. And if you go to what you might think is landscapes, you probably look at the context and you're thinking, well, we not only did we look at all this, but there aren't landscapes here. We don't have settings like landscapes. Well, it's in a weird place, actually. So if you come over here, of course, in our, in our materials, not quite yet, not materials, but vegetation and landscape. Well, this doesn't tell us much either, but there's actually a landscapes folder. And these are two different kinds of landscapes that we can start to work with. We've got flat and rocky grasslands. Cool. But what do they do? Well, they're, they're not materials. It, it just so happens that they're landscapes. <laughs> There's something different. And so it's just something that is really great, all within Twin Motion. And you may not know it's there, to this degree at least. But I've got flat and rocky grasslands. Let's go from there. It's, it's imagine you want to add a material to your project, not like literally just bringing in a material, but like it's equivalent to placing a material on an element compared to placing a material on your project. And so that's kind of what this is. So I'm going to take it as if it were a material and then just dump it in my project. It's going to prepare the terrain, the height map, which in this case it's flat. So it'll just be a single color if we were to find the height map. And there we go. Look at that landscape. That's great. Landscape. So you might say now, well, this is boring. It's flat. There's nothing we can do here. In fact, you're wrong. There is. There's plenty we can do here. We can sculpt the terrain and paint the terrain. Painting terrain, you might say, is similar to context, like actually adding trees and, you know, painting on vegetation. Just so happens that it's not because it has everything to do with how we might affect the landscape itself, not just from a material standpoint or what we might place on to the landscape as context. So all I need to do is end up selecting this terrain, this landscape once again with the landscapes here, and I can sculpt or paint. And so let's first look at sculpt, because honestly, sculpt is fun. It is what you think it is. It's literally sculpting terrain. And so there's a lot to look at here, but it really is simple. And the idea here is you also, you're not going to get it to something that's real world or something specific, but it will produce something that is real world looking. You know, if you want to make some hills, rivers, creeks, ocean, nothing, anything like that. Uh, recess or incline areas, hill, it doesn't matter. That's what we can achieve here. So we're just painting. So I've got a 33 foot diameter and I can increase that if I want. I, the intensity you'll see will increase if I wanted to, and you'll see the dramatic effect, but I'm going to let, put it back at 15. We've got different shapes that we can use. We've got a, a hard edge circle or a smooth circle. It is funny that the smooth circle outline is a square. That's just funny. We've got blobs, which is also a square, and then strain, which stains. Okay, let's, let's look at the circle. Just first look in the circle. And as soon as I press here, we're going to get an incline. And it's based on, you know, where I'm clicking. And there's a certain point where I'm going to hit a new elevation. And based on that elevation, you know, the change in that elevation, the angle, if you will, Twin Motion is going to automatically create some what are decent enough looking rocky areas. And, you know, you can take this as far as you want. It can get as absurd as you want it to be, which is kind of cool. But, you know, maybe you want, if you want this to be a little more specific, okay, we, we might want to turn our intensity down. And, you know, if we turn our intensity like almost all the way down, maybe 1%, you can see the slight change as I, I'm still holding my mouse down and it's just so slight, which is really nice. You, you can really sculpt this quite, quite easily, pretty quickly. And in a way that 
looks pretty good and looks accurate and everything. But if we, the moment we increase that intensity, if, you know, anything above 50, is just going to be dramatic really quick, boom, immediately. And maybe you want that. We're, we're looking at these giant swaths. Okay. So we can look at that. We can look at the smooth circle, which is, you know, pretty similar, pretty similar look there because it's a circle. The blobs are kind of interesting because it, it will just create these weird looking blobs here and there. I like it, but at the same time, I don't because it's it's not as random as I'd want it to be. And then stains, similar idea to the blobs. At least they're a little less uniform looking. But finally, we've got all these different options here. So we're actually just the whole time just been raising. We've only been raising the terrain. But in fact, maybe we want to dig <laughs> as in recess. We want to dig, make some areas that are dug into the earth there. You know, really simple, really cool, really quick. Maybe we want to smooth it out. So we've got too much little undulation, small little bumps here. We can smooth this out really easily. Looks good. Really quick. And then here, we've got, maybe we want to increase the noise. So like, there's a lot going on here really quick. Maybe I want to bring that intensity down. And, you know, I can see that the noise is just going to give us like some crazy ups and down changes within one little area. I don't like that tool necessarily so much, but it's fine. Erode, so we can just take a chunk out somewhere, take a chunk out in the middle, just it'll just bring it all the way down where you've got these like larger areas. Okay. And then finally flatten. So this will bring it all to like a certain point in the middle, which is in flatten being like back to my flat area. So if I try and flatten anything out here, nothing will happen because it's already flat. And eventually if I just put this at hundred, I can get everything back to flat. Just just you basically erase it all like, okay, pretty sweet. Like, so immediately you could see easy to use, really nice, but not precise. Like that's just the point here. You just have to know that it is not precise at all. And just, if you know that moving forward, then, you know, you're good to go because you can make something that looks really great here. And so I, I want to make some areas that look a little bit more dramatic, just, you know, for absurdity purposes, but also for the next part of what we're going to look at. We'll end up looking at, all the painting that we can do and to add a little bit more personality to this terrain because you know it's good out of the box it does look good but as far as materials go like you know there's not a whole lot we can do there's only so much we can do let me say it let me put it that way there's only so much that we can do so i mean i'm at the point where this it looks fine you can do whatever you want but for the sake of what i'm doing here let's go ahead and look at the other part of landscapes. So of course, go back to landscapes here and I can paint the terrain. So as soon as I click on that, I'm like, whoa, there's a lot going on here. And there is, but uh, it really has everything to do with the different layers that we're seeing here. And by layers, I mean, there's four different options of actual materials that we can use to paint onto the landscape. So fortunately, Twin Motion does this for us to a degree because it has already done it. it. It comes in with the grass and there's a point to where we get these rocks showing up. Easy enough. I'm actually going to create some recesses so we could see some something similar, but with a recessed area. So let's go ahead and recess some area in here. Make a little pit, something like that. Okay, so this is, this is working for us. So this, this is not bad. So going back now to paint terrain. We have, we have the option of painting, like we're literally painting on top of the terrain if we want. And that's all based on these different layers of materials that we have to choose from. Now, the thing to be aware about of these is that it's already filling the landscape in with these materials. And you will know that <laughs> if I, for some reason, decide, well, you know, I want a grassy ground instead of a, a grass one. Or maybe I want a grass five instead of a grass one so I can drag this grass five over the grass one, and immediately that is changed everywhere, which is really nice. That's cool. Quick, easy. That's what we want. So maybe I decide that, you know, I this patch here, somewhere in the middle between these two rocks, I want this to be the same rock instead of the grass. Well, I can simply click the rock, this mossy rocks there, and then just paint in between. And I can literally extend where that rock is. <laughs> and it looks good. You know, maybe I can fill in this area. I want all this to kind of be more of a rock. That's really good looking. I mean, it, it's simple. Again, we're just trying to make this simple. You can fill it in with the rocks there. Cool. 
Now, maybe you want to come back and decide, well, you know, I, I think it probably should be more grass. Then just do that again. It'll work all the same. Now, something I did notice is that there's a point to which painting, it just won't work. And so if, and that has everything to do with the elevation change and the grade, which for some reason, I don't know why it is. I don't know why that changes things because as I, you can see that my, in a sense, paintbrush will fit appropriately over the terrain. But nonetheless, if I were to paint grass over this highly inclined area, nothing will happen. I'm trying to paint here. I'm trying to paint. Nothing happens until I get more to a flat area. So just keep in mind that when you're wanting to paint onto landscape, you're going to have better luck and actually be able to paint the landscape on a flatter area. Just kind of know that. <clears throat> now, the nice thing here is we've got these four layers filled in and it might be hard to see where some of these other layers are, but they're kind of fit, like filled in between some of the layers, but they're, they're really, we can change this to anything. So I, I'm in nature and, you know, maybe we've got a, an area that has pebbles. We can literally drag this in and select this and then start to paint pebbles on like, Cool. That's good stuff. Easy to do. We've got like this whole patch of pebbles, something like that. Easy. Cool. Now, maybe we want to get a little weird with it. And I can't say why, but there might be some reason. So we can come up to any other material. It does not have to be simply, you know, these landscaping materials. I can come to this, you know, concrete. And you'll see as I drag it over that, that area that was just all of my pebbles, it's now turned into concrete because I literally replaced the concrete slab with the pebbles. <laughs> so obviously this looks absurd because you wouldn't have concrete like that in the form of a tile, but we can continue to paint this on. You know, maybe I decide, well, I, I want more of it. So I can continue to paint this on what is essentially a flat area. Again, this won't necessarily work on an incline like that, but that's nice. I can change this to absolutely anything I want. If I decide, well, you know, that floor, it's going to replace this material wherever it is. And you notice I, I barely have some of the wood over here that ended up replacing. And I, from what I can tell by default, these two materials in the middle are just filling in the small gaps between this first and the fourth material in like the landscape by default. So if I decide, well, you know, I want that to be darker. Okay. If I want this to be that dark wood. Okay. You know, it really, you can do anything you want. It's going to start to replace these. And as absurd as it is, you can make any, make this any material that you want. It can look absolutely any way that you want. I don't know why you would do this necessarily, but <laughs> you could. And so we have the same tools here to work with. We've got opacity, um, scale, the shape, of course, all the, those are the same. And then of course the diameter, we don't have any of the, the other options as far as like painting, digging, Anything like that. It's just it's just the paintbrush. It's just a paint. So maybe we do want to focus a little more on some of these ground materials. You know, it just kind of makes a little more sense. Maybe a little more grassy there, fresh grass there. Like this is it at least looks more like <laughs> the type of grass that you'd expect to see. And at this point, we you know fill this in if we want, change it up, make it look like you want. And at this point, you know, that's kind of it. You know, we've looked at everything. Something cool we could always do is come into here. Weather effects, ocean. We can enable an ocean. And maybe I want to reduce the height there so it doesn't quite fill up. And, you know, it could be just that it's a small lake area over here. Or maybe we want it to look more like an actual ocean and come up around the whole landscape as if this were like a solid island you know, really cool, easy stuff, not bad, not hard. Like, and then you can start to make this look however you want. And so this is where maybe some of my different painting options come into play, because at this point, maybe I want to paint what looks more like a sand, you know, something, maybe not this wavy sand, maybe not quite a, a desert sand, but maybe this wet sand. I can take this here. I can paint this along the edge. And suddenly we've got some wet looking sand over there on the edge of the water and it looks good. You know, I would, I might want to change the scale, things like that, but unfortunately we're just kind of stuck with the way things are, except, you know, you can change the scale that like that way, the opacity, if you don't want that to be at a hundred all the time, you can really, you know, just change that value up. Obviously this is all up to you. It's very simple to do. I'd recommend that you get into this because it, it looks really great.
it's easy to use and the effect that you have you can fade out materials do absolutely anything that you want with the landscape is awesome and it just so happens that again this is not the scale nothing like that but it's cool you know it's fun to look at it's you know I would not end up using this, unfortunately, for something that is a real world project. <laughs> it's just kind of the way it is. You know, unfortunately, I, I wish there were a better way to use something like this because I could see how helpful this could be for a real world project. It's just that the scale is not right, this or that. Like, it, it, it's, a, it's one thing or the other. I don't know. Something like that. So that will do it for this video. You know, hope you learned something. If you did demolish that like button, it really helps also consider subscribing that does as well i know a lot of you haven't done that yet so please do it helps me out so sure hope to see you in the next video have a wonderful day and thanks for watching